Alright, so that's category. Number two is conceptualization. Conceptualization is next. Um, conceptualization is, quote, and this again is from, where is this from? This is from uh, Strauss and Corbin as well. Um, conceptualization is, quote, the first step in analysis, right? It's the first thing that you do uh, in analysis is you're going to attempt to conceptualize. This idea of conceptualization um, is not unique to grounded theory. It's an element of all qualitative all qualitative research, whether you're using grounded theory or ethnography, case study, or phenomenological research, um, the whole idea is to conceptualize. Um, what the difference, I guess, between uh, an approach that is more phenomenological in its basis, um, in contrast to a grounded theory, is that the conceptualization within grounded theory, and this is very important, typically um, takes place. Uh, it says the first the first step in analysis, but it's not going to be verified, right? That conceptualization, the ideas that I have, um, the way that I want to make sense of my data, isn't going to happen until after I've collected my data, right? So I might have an idea, right? I might conceptualize from the beginning of my research that, hey, you know, I think that there has to be a link between adults' levels of alcoholism and uh, exposure to alcohol at a very young age. I might have this as quote unquote my hypothesis, right? I might, I might, my, my research might be buttressed in this, in this concept. I can't justify that claim until after I've used the data to make sense, to verify, to validate that claim. So as the first step in my process, what I do is, in conceptualizing, what I do is I frame the research objective, right? And I'll talk more about this in a little bit. I'll frame my research objective but that research objective and the theory that is derived from the data is not going to be viable until I have substantiated the claims, my propositions, the theory, um, which hopefully is grounded in the data. Um, my claim is now justified because my N of 25,000 substantiates the claim that, no, it is, it is not, it's not coincidence. There are all these redundancies, and all of these redundancies substantiate my claim that dot, 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 dot. So conceptualization is uh, very important, it's, as Strauss and Corbin say, sort of the first, the first step in the process. But conceptualization, as I said before, this idea of um, proposing is always associated with the interplay between the propositions that I make, um, the theory that I discover, and the validation of that theory against the hard data, right? It's always this interplay between what is proposed and the checking that, checking those uh, propositions, validating those propositions. Okay, the next concept, uh, which is which is extremely important in um, in grounded theory, is what's known as theoretical sampling. Theoretical sampling. Theoretical sampling is a, a technical concept, and I'll, I'll explain what it means. It's really not that difficult to understand. Um, what I have here in uh, this is the top of page ten: analyzing and honing conceptual categories. Right? You want to make sense of. You want to fill out. You want to saturate. To be technical, your categories. You want them to be filled. To be filled. To be holistic. You want them to offer a very clear account of whatever the concepts are that support the category. So, um, quote, and this is from, where is this from, 21? This is from Strauss and Corbin as well. Theoretical sampling is sampling, quote, sampling on the basis of concepts that have proven theoretically rele uh, uh, relevant to the evolving theory, right? Um, so sampling on the basis of concepts that have proven theoretical relevance to the evolving theory. Um, this is the idea of what I what I classify as sort of as this zigzag, right? It's this back and forth. And theoretical sampling, uh, and I'll, I'll read that again because it might not have been clear, and then I'll give you an example that definitely clears it up, hopefully. I'll read this again. Analyzing and honing conceptual categories, quote, sampling on the basis of concepts that have proven theoretical relevance to the evolving theory. So I have an idea. Right, and 
I am attempting to create uh, this category, a very general category. I'll give you another example, an example that I'm going to use uh, later. Let's say my um, category that I'm going to use is domestic violence, right? Um, it's pretty, pretty general categories. Lots of concepts substantiate the idea of domestic violence as a category. It might not be the best category, but you get the idea. Something very general. Um, the theoretical sampling in my research is going to help the reader and also my theory substantiate all the claims that I make with respect to domestic violence. So it might be the case that I'm interviewing people who are, uh, and I'm trying to make this very simple, I'm interviewing people who have been victimized by their spouse, male or female, who have been victimized by their spouse. So I go around and I say, hey, you know, tell me your story of victimization, to, hey, tell me your story of victimization, and I collect, now the category that I'm attempting to articulate is domestic violence. But up until this point, the only people, the only participants that I've interviewed within my research are individuals who've been victimized by their spouse. Well, obviously there's a lack in my research, right? Because domestic violence is sort of contingent on both the victimized and the victimizer. So what I would do in an instance of theoretical sampling in order to make my population demographic more holistic is I would interview those who I need to theoretically sample those who are victimizing their spouse, right? So, to say it again, if I recognize, and this is very general, but if I recognize that my population of participants in an analysis of domestic abuse are only the spouses who have been victimized, V-I-C-T-I-M-I-Z-E-D, right? So if this is all that I have, and I recognize that I haven't interviewed any victimizers, right, individuals who participate in, you know, berating their, their spouse or beating their spouse, whatever, then I need to theoretically sample that population, right? My, my, my concept is substantiated. It's made, uh, it's given more meaning by me selectively sampling. I recognize, you know what, my, my research is lacking this. I need to find deliberately people who fit this category. Right? Because in interviewing them and getting information from them, I'm substantiating my data. So I selectively, as a researcher, go back and re read through my, my notes, read through the data, and based on what I'm reading in the data, I recognize, wow, there's a hole, there's a, there's a lacuna, which is a hole. Um, there's a lacuna in my research, and it's where I locate these holes, these gaps in my research that I then theoretically sample members of a population. Hey, I just recognized that in doing my domestic abuse research, um, I, I never realized that my whole population of participants um, are composed completely of those people who have been victimized. I need to theoretically sample victimizers. Why? Because the concept, the category of, victi uh, of uh, uh, domestic abuse is determined by both parties. So in order to, for my research to be substantiated in the propositions that I make to be substantiated in the data, I need to selectively target people that I haven't targeted before. So then you identify who needs to be targeted and you go out into the community and conduct your surveys, conduct your interviews in order to get the data to fill that hole, right? So that's the idea. So theoretical sampling then is one It's an identification of missing data, right, the lacuna. Um, you identify lacunas in your research, holes in your research. So once you identify, and obviously you do this after you've collected your data and you're back in the office or in your grad dorm room or wherever you're doing your research, um, you identify, wow, uh, you know, I did my interviews, but the data is telling me, suggesting that um, there's a hole, something is unaccounted for. Once you've identified um, what's missing, you need to need to selectively target interview, survey, that, that, that. So you need to selectively target members of the population, new participants to interview, and based on the responses that they give, that data, that new data that you generate from your participants is going to be used to 
fill this missing data, right? So the three, after I've selectively target these new people, their data, the data is going to be used to fill the missing information. So theoretical sampling sort of unfolds in three stages. First, I identify um, lacunas within the research. Second, I selectively target members of the population um, precisely because I know the information that they're going to give me, the responses that they're going to give me, are going to address those that missing information. And then, obviously, after I've collected their data, their data is used to fill that information. Once that data has been used to fill that information, um, what will happen is I will saturate, I will strengthen the category and the concepts that inform that data. So this whole idea of being grounded is, and I really like the idea of grounded, you can imagine that if we're talking about a, a floor, um, this, right, and this is my theory, this is something that I'm missing, right? Right, missing data, this is my lacuna. What I do is I find members of the population that can fit that, that can fill it, right? So I put that information in, I actually would look something like this, look the other way. I find members of the, uh, the population that can fill it. They sort of cap off this missing data, right? So they cap off this missing data. And then, you know, I can continue about my sort of theoretical propositions. So that's the whole point of it, right? The whole idea of theoretical sampling, it's sort of like uh, filling in the holes. That's actually a really good way to look at it, right? Uh,